Yes. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. This is Vrinda from Baltimore. I welcome you all to today's session. Um, Maharaj, uh, please take over the call. Maharaj, uh, Maharaj, what is today's topic? Is it a resolution of the new year? Uh, yes. Maharaj, yes. yes. Okay. Please take uh, over. Uh, yeah, before I sit, do that, there should one thing you should always remember. Okay. And that is, uh, if you're playing the, the kirtan and it's time to start, you don't cut the maha mantra. Okay. You, you wait until the, the maha mantra finishes, then you then you close. You can't cut it off in the middle. Okay, Maharaj. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a rule for all the boys uh, who host this program. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hmm. Um, hmm. Ma om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Lakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kimoni Namastasi Yusvati Devi Gorvani Pachari May Nirvasi Sasan Yavari Asyati Devi Satarani Anchikalpa Tarupa Chakri Pasinda Devi Chakti Tanam Pavari Gil Vaishnavi Gil Namahonamaha Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Tanya, Puru Nityananda, Sri Adelaide Gadanapar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So this is January 1st. Uh, the First day of the new calendar year for the Christian tradition, the Judeo Christian calendar. Uh, we should mention that for Vaishnavas, our new year is different, it's a different day. It's one of two places for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It's, it's Lord Chaitanya's appearance day, that is the new year, which happens sometime usually in March. Or in the Vedic scheme, the new year is the Sant Panchami, which is the first day of the spring season. And that is uh, usually comes sometime in February. But we are all connected with and very much follow the Judeo-Christian tradition. And so New Year has a particular significance for everyone. And people think as the old year ends and the new year comes it's a time for reflection about what do i want to how how do i want to bring uh, my activities into the new year in a way that is improved uh, we look at the new year as a way to make a vow, a promise, actually a vow, to uh, increase the quality of our life. And we look at it in different ways. Uh, we call it resolution. Mm -hmm. Resolve, the word resolve is the basic word of resolution. Resolve means 
uh, very strongly desires to do something in, in a particular area. So uh, we look towards the new year as ways to uh, take the opportunity to improve our life. Of course, we might also say that we do that every day. <laughs> uh, usually we do that in a, a less formal way less conscious way, although we do it. But now it's kind of formalized itself into a, a tradition that includes the whole world in a particular mindset. Of what will the future be like and how to make it improve the quality of my life? Uh, we also look at it as a way to uh, look back and see where we could have improved in our in the past year or the past days in our life. We uh, think about it in a way that, well, hmm, mm, I should, maybe I shouldn't have done this or maybe I should have did this. So there was this also a type of kind of like almost like a regret that something I wanted to do or could have done didn't happen or something that I didn't want to happen did happen. <laughs> so we uh, looked at it in a very analytical way and think, I want to avoid that in the future. So let me put in place a certain mindset that will help me avoid that in the future. We also think about it in terms of relationships with other living entities, close friends, family members, people in general also, and how we want to improve the quality of those relationships to find, give more opportunity to see ourselves as someone who can contribute to somebody's, somebody else's welfare in a more direct and meaningful way or in a more improved way, you might say. So we reflect in different ways and uh, it's good. It should be done. It's part of a devotee's life to take inventory and to and, uh, discriminate between what is favorable and what is unfavorable and how to um, increase the favorable and decrease the unfavorable or eliminate the unfavorable. Um, and so we make some vows mm -hmm. and uh, these things should be done, but for a Vaishnava, the vow is uh, centrally uh, focused on Krishna. We can think of so many things that would be intermediate goals in our Krishna consciousness. But then again, we should also reflect on the ultimate goal of Krishna consciousness, which is Prema Kumarta Mahan, uh, love for Krishna. How much do I actually love Krishna? How much do I show my love for Krishna? What are those activities that I do that are really focused on my expression for my love for Krishna? Um, do I really appreciate Krishna's presence in my life and how much do I do? How much do I appreciate that? So let me uh, increase the amount of appreciation I have for Krishna. Let me increase the amount of devotion I have for Krishna. And maybe even the amount of service I do for Krishna. So sometimes we see 
using the secular uh, program for making vows, people usually try to do something more or do something better. And for us as devotees, that more and better centers around our relationship with Krishna. Uh, I want to love Krishna more. So how do I do that? What is the formula for making that happen? Well, we can take that into different areas, but one of the formulas that we should reflect on is the more I know about Krishna, the, no, the more I know about my relationship with Krishna, the more my natural attraction and affection for Krishna will be enhanced. When you know someone who is worthy of your love, and then that, in, that knowledge inspires a greater sense of love in your relationship. One of the things that we can learn about Krishna that is very helpful is how kind Krishna is, how merciful Krishna is, how forgiving Krishna is. Uh, these are things that are mentioned in the Shastras and his, in his pastimes with his devotees, especially his devotees in Vrindavandam. And how Krishna is always, and this is, we use the word with emphasis, always trying to serve his devotees. He makes that his main objective. He is the all-powerful creative force in existence. But his creative aspect of his existence takes a backseat for him in, in, in his relationship with his devotees. He always talks about how, how, much, how much he likes to serve his devotees and how he serves his devotees also. He appears in our life to give us knowledge he reminds us what we're supposed to do. He uh, forgives us when we do the wrong thing, unless we continue to do it. <laughs> then that forgiveness turns into a form of chastisement. <laughs> but Krishna is a person and we have a direct and very loving and very powerful relationship with Krishna. So this is one of the uh, elements we can focus on when we decide where we want to improve in our life. So as devotees, how much we can increase our love for Krishna. Increasing our love for Krishna means coming closer to uh, the uh, eternal life with Krishna. Um, the days that go on, just like there are 365 days in the year, and the uh, scriptures speak about, uh, it's a very interesting statement from the second canto, third chapter, verse number 17. It says, uh, with, uh, by the rising and setting of the sun, another day is lost and one is closer to death, except for one who engages in hearing and glorifying the all good Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now it's an interesting statement because we know just like it might, it might be like for some of us, it's like, like for me, it's right now, it's 22 minutes after five o'clock in the evening. So in a little while, that 
522 will be gone. It'll be 523 and then onward. So time is the measurement for our duration of life. And it's always bringing us closer to the end of the body. Every second, every minute, we're getting closer to death. Or we might say the end of the body. But the scriptures give a clearer, a clearer understanding of the purpose of life is that when we used life to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, and we make that the most important thing in our life, then we're not moving towards death, we're moving towards eternal life. That is the difference. And that's a, it's a qualitative difference. It's not a, something that is insignificant. For the non-devotees, those who live for the material body and to satisfy the needs and, and desires of the body, um, they're always fearful because the time element is pushing them towards the end of their plans for happiness in this world. And then death comes along and takes everything away, everything they've worked for, everything they've dreamed about, Everything, everything they have is all, it's all gone in one quick moment. But for a devotee, they know, well, the body has to end, but I'm eternal and I can understand my eternal nature when I engage in activities on the platform of eternity. And that is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord which not only brings us towards eternal life, but it awakens more and more our awareness in our relationship with Krishna. And to make a promise, we have to decide what is the most important thing in our life. When, and this is also a feature of how this new year resolution plays itself out. We always think, what is the most important thing that I should resolve to do or resolve to avoid? It's not like, oh, well, there's so many things. Well, let me just choose. And no, we kind of think in terms of what's the most important thing? Or more of the most essential thing. And then when we think about it, as devotees, our goal in devotional service is to reawaken that natural love, which is sitting, situated in the heart of all living entities, for Krishna. Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Sarukabhunoy, Sravanari Siddhi Chitte, Kodiye Udoy. It's Bengali. And it's spoken, I believe, by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, where he said that in, uh, well, actually written by uh, Krishna Das Govind Kaviraj Goswami, paraphrasing Lord Chaitanya's statement that in the hearts of all living entities, pure love for God is the natural position of every soul. And that love is the what we call it's gupta and gupta means it's gupta means hidden it's a hidden treasure but it's hidden but we know where it is but to uh, to take advantage of that treasure there is a process to uh dig it up we have to use our uh shovels and uh, excavating machines to get through all of the debris and all of the uh, things that are covering that treasure. And when we find the treasure, you know, just like when you sometimes you're looking for uh, a treasure, say you're say you're mining rubies or mining gold, when you start getting close to the actual vein of where the 
the jewels are, you start seeing a few of the little jewels appear. Then you know, oh, I'm getting closer to the main vein. I just keep digging. I'll get to the whole load of these wonderful and valuable jewels. So a little bit comes here and there. These are little reflections of our natural love for Krishna. But it's not enough to satisfy us. We want to unearth that whole treasure. And therefore, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is one of the ways that is the most direct and most effective and most recommended, recommended by those who have achieved it, way to uh, unearth or bring about that awareness of that hidden treasure that has been there for millions of life, but has never been uh, discovered. That's Krishna consciousness. So this, um, this, this uh, New Year's, although it's a secular thing in terms of making promises and uh, resolutions, has a very significant benefit for devotees because it inspires them to go deeper into the goal of life. And even if we don't make that as the resolution, we make something about our spiritual practice uh, significant in our life that will bring us about. We should not think in terms of, well, I just need to get a better job. So let me focus on that. I need, I need better uh, facilities in order to fulfill my desires for uh, happiness in this world. In other words, nadanam najanam nasundarim kabitam vajagadisha kamri. These uh, ephemeral and fleeting things that come and go in the in the and the breezes of the wind. The wind comes and breezes something in front of our in front of our nose, and we smell something fragrant. But then the breeze continues, and that fragrance is no longer there. And another fragrance, maybe not so much of a fragrance, comes. It's more like an odor <laughs> when that comes. So the ephemeral things of this world are numerous and uh, superfluous to our real happiness and our real uh, goal of life. So to look towards this opportunity to increase the quality of our life in a material way would be to cheat ourselves <laughs> out of the real treasure, Krishna consciousness. Uh, of course, we can also make very more subtle forms of resolutions. For example, uh, I'm going to be very mindful of everything I do at every moment of my waking day. Let me be completely mindful of everything and give my heart, give my full attention, give my uh, proactive intelligence to everything I do. And in that way, the quality of my activities will bring greater satisfaction and greater amounts of happiness. So, um, yes, we do. We recommend everyone take some time, reflect on this opportunity, and uh, see where you can improve in your Krishna consciousness. Because Krishna consciousness is the natural constitutional position of each and every living entity, no matter what body that living entity inhabits. Because that is the nature of life. Life means Krishna. The source of life is Krishna. The maintainer of life is Krishna. The uh, one who alters Things in life is also Krishna. Krishna is everything in existence. 
there is either Krishna or Krishna's energy. There is the sun and then there's the sun's energy. There's not, there's no difference. In the same way, um, everything in existence, when we see it through the eyes of knowledge, we understand everything is related to Krishna directly and indirectly. We use the word indirect from our perspective, but from Krishna's perspective, everything is directly connected to him because he doesn't make a distinction between direct and indirect because everything is his energy, everything is, his, is an expression of his existence. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if we can talk about this idea of how to improve our life. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for today's session, Maharaj. Thank you. I request devotees, if there are any comments, realizations, or questions, please go ahead. We ask everyone to turn on, the videos. Turn on their uh, videos. Yeah. videos so we can have a satsang <laughs> and not simply a computer sound <laughs> yeah. maybe one of the resolutions that one that the devotees can make is that from now on i'll turn on my camera during maharaj's talk <laughs> That would be a nice resolution. <laughs> Any would anyone would like to? You can also talk about maybe some of you already have taken out your pencil and paper and, and written down some of your resolutions. You can also maybe speak about those things too. That will be the point of discussion. Yes, Vishabha Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, to you and all the Vaishnavas assembled. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I was just, it's really interesting, Maharaj, you read minds, that's for sure. I was just thinking to make a resolution not to give my attention, uh, to be conscious where I put my attention to. Is it to my body? Is it to my mind or to activities of Krishna consciousness? So, as uh, we had a play in Croatia and uh, the point of the play was to what you give attention to, it kind of grows and gets empowered. So just giving attention to the body and the mind is not a good idea. So I will try to do the, the other part. <laughs> yeah, we have a right? yeah, we have a body and it requires some attention, but it's not, it's not the main focus for attention. That's the difference. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. The body and mind are also yelling at us. Give me attention. They scream. Not just ask, they scream. Give I don't you know I'm here and I'm here to serve you so Help me serve you by giving me 24-7 attention. So if, if, if you ignore it a little, uh, it will kind of uh, come down? Well, 
there's certain things you have to ignore and certain things you have to attend to. Mm -hmm. But your attention should be on Krishna and your activities should be in relationship to what is required. So we're required to love and serve Krishna. That, that's our main activity. But we have to eat and we have to discriminate between what we eat and what we don't eat. We have to sleep and we have to see where we get enough rest, but not too much. So these, some of these things are also required. They also are required because it's the vehicle by which we move around in. That's the call the body. But it's not us. Mm. It's just a vehicle. Thank you, Makarich. Take care of the vehicle, but don't don't sit in the vehicle all day and admire the steering wheel and the, the dashboard and your stereo and your bucket seats and your, your power shift. You know, that's not the idea. <laughs> Just use it and be and use it to get where you're going. Where are we going? We want to go and back to Krishna. <laughs> I guess it's really useful, Maharaj, to know all this, uh, you know, how to maintain the body nicely. And I find the Ayurveda really helpful in, in this regard. So, yeah, I guess so. Okay. And the Sriman. On Chaitanya Charitamrita, I can't remember, I think it's in the very beginning of the Adi Lila. Towards the, there's one verse that says there are 22 ways by which one can engage in sense gratification. Mm -hmm. 22 ways. So, well, for example, too much focus on health, that's, uh, that's one way for sense gratification to appear. Uh, political, social, familial, uh, different categories of life that sense gratification can be uh, used or act enacted. So all of these things have some relevance to our existence. But then again, what is sense gratification, what is not? Well, that's, that's individual, but there is a general principle. And that general principle is not too much, not too little when it comes to the bodily needs. If you want to find out about Ayurveda, then just go to an Ayurveda doctor <laughs> and he'll tell you what you need. <laughs> you don't have to study Ayurveda just to fix your health. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances on Rosh Tushar Prabhupada. Um, thank you so much Guru Maharaj for the nice class. Um, actually, I am um, I am always um, afraid of uh, taking uh, new year resolutions because whenever I decide on something, it's very difficult to follow. <laughs> so, even though I have a lot of things to do in my mind for the coming year, uh, for this new year, but I'm afraid to declare them out, out uh, because whenever I decide on something, it's like, I don't know why, 
it's very difficult to follow them, Guru Maharaj. Well, we were discussing this, and one point you should understand that when you resolve to do something, you will get challenges, you will get obstacles, but these are part of fulfilling that need or that desire. It's not always like, well, I'm going to do this and it's going to be so easy. No, it may be easy, but generally there is ways that material energy and Krishna works in order to fine tune your, your desire in such a way that it actually comes out even better. So don't be afraid of challenges. <laughs> Don't be afraid of obstacles. Just you have to learn how to see them in the bigger picture and not just, oh, here's a here's a problem. Just like there are some people that that, that stay busy all day and can't get anything done. <laughs> and there's others who do a little and get a lot done. Uh, what is that? Well, aside from the individual, there is a thing called time management. It's a science. How to manage your time. To maximize the, the, the efficiency of time. So that's, that's a little bit of a, a, a science. And for devotees, I think that's very important. How to use your time in the most uh, effective way, beneficial way. So that's, an, that's just an example. Don't get discouraged by obstacles. Obstacles are opportunities. That's good, Maharaj. Yeah. Those who accept obstacles as opportunities are the ones who actually make it back to Godhead. The ones who run from the obstacles, those are the ones that never can never do anything in life, even materially. Mm -hmm. Isn't that correct to Sri Krishna Chaitanya? Sure. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he likes obstacles and he's good at tackling these things. So he knows how to go forward, right? No, Guru Maharaj, I'm just trying to do it. So. <laughs> yeah, but you have you have a quality of determination that nothing discourages you, right? I don't know, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Is that true, Sri Bhakti? <laughs> yeah, he tries his level best uh, to do the thing. Uh, um, to, so he, he tries, Guru Maharaj. Um, let's start. Yeah, that's, why, that's, why he's, that's why he's so successful. Dal Krishna Smatsi and your blessing. Yeah. We were speaking about this just last night in the temple. What is the difference between failure and success? And there's only, it's, it's just a one word answer. Determination. Yeah. Those who have no determination, they can't do anything if they fail. Those who have determination always somehow or other achieve their goals or at least understand how to uh, adjust things to make it even better. Determination is a feature of the will. So make a, if you're gonna make a promise, think about what you're doing before you finally consummate that promise. Okay, this is it. And then be ready to accept whatever difficulties that come or challenges or adjustments. Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, we start with an idea 
And then that idea takes us in different directions until we actually come to the conclusion. But that, you know, well, I'm going to do this. Okay. But there's other factors that come into play that you should be ready to, to you know, expect those things. Sometimes we say, this is just a little cliche, uh, but it has some meaning. Uh, hope for the best and expect the worst. Yeah. Hope for the best means, yeah, yeah you're, you're trying to, for success accordingly. But when the worst does come, it's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah. That's good life. And when the worst doesn't come, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll... Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please give your blessings, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. My blessing is to become fully attached to Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And not to the things that Krishna gives us, but to Krishna himself. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, you talked that, you said that we will get challenges and obstacles. We can expect that always when we make a resolution. But one of the challenges that uh, our enthusiasm, I mean, in my case, my enthusiasm is uh, high when I decide to do something, but as and how the year goes by, the enthusiasm also is, it fades away. So how can I work on that, Maharaj? <laughs> That's very difficult. How to keep the enthusiasm up. Yeah, it's okay. You, you have to make sure that your goals are in line with actually what is important. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, if the, the goals are not really important, so important, and then when these uh, time goes on, then the enthusiasm goes down anyway. Mm -hmm. When you want to achieve something, you can if it's in line with what's beneficial. And of course, the Krishna factor is a very big thing is that anything you do in Krishna consciousness that is meant to increase the quality and quantity of your devotional life and your relationship with Krishna, you know, you should know that Krishna will help you. Mm -hmm. But his help comes in proportion to your enthusiasm. He reciprocates in that way. Thank you, Maharaj. There's another one point, Maharaj, uh, you said that when we continue to make mistakes again and again, Krishna's forgiveness turns into his chastisement. That was an eye-opening statement for me, actually. Uh, so in what form the chastisement comes to us, Maharaj, in that case? <laughs> it could be in many forms. Okay. <laughs> You're looking for an example? <laughs> okay. okay, so um, so there's a pizza party. And so you eat your limit on pizza. 
And then someone comes over and says, well, you have to have one more because this one's really hot. It's the best one. So you think, hmm, I know I, I, know I should do it. <laughs> but how can I refuse? So you eat one more and then you think, well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and then another one comes. You thought, well, you know, why not? <laughs> and then the night tomorrow you have to fast. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I kind of got, got it, Maharaj, but we sometimes also say that um, we get some reaction of our karma too. So that is also like comes into that chastisement of Krishna or it is different, separate part. Mm. The relationship with Krishna is not under the influence of karma. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your karma, and that's a whole long subject for explanations, but when it comes to karma, for a devotee, Krishna neutralizes the effects of the karma up to a certain point. He leaves a little bit of that karmic result coming to you as a way to instruct you and that this you have to consciously change your life in order to avoid the reactions of these karmic activities. It's called Parabdha Karma. <clears throat> that karma that Krishna allows you to experience for the sake of growing from that experience mm -hmm. by avoiding the activities that produce that karma. Okay. But when you're engaged in devotional service, there's no karma. It's called a karma. That means that which produces no material result. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's clear now, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, devotees, anyone else has anything to share or ask any questions? Please go ahead. Madan Gopal has his, yeah, he's got Gopal. his yellow hand up. Okay. Please go ahead, Prabhuji. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you. In relation to um, this question, what if the devotional service you're doing is tainted by so many, you know, your mind or somebody, um, yeah, like you're not in the right mood, but you're still doing devotional service or you might be, um, somebody might be eating garlic and onions or having caffeine or whatever it may be, like they're not following the regs, but they're still doing devotional service. Is it, does Krishna, is it less appreciated by Krishna or is it, um, yeah. Well, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto, devotional service in the mode of passion devotional service in the mode of ignorance and devotional service in the mode of goodness. And then we have what is devotional service that is suicide above the three modes. So in, a, in that uh, categorization, there is qualities and characteristics that are uh, what we say, uh, or, uh, what's the word? There are characteristics of each of the three modes. So um, you'll get the results accordingly. That's that. But devotional service is meant to attract the attention of Krishna. The devotional service as performed within the modes gets you a little bit. If you perform devotional service in the mode of passion, you're, you're elevated slightly. You're de performing devotional service in the mode of goodness, you're elevated much more. If you're performing devotional service in the mode of ignorance, 
it's practically on the material level. For, against, for instance, what is devotional service in the mode of ignorance? Is I don't like someone, therefore in my devotional service, I'm using that to, to uh, get back at them for some reason. That's devotional service in the mode of ignorance. Emotional service in the mode of passion is that I'm attached to the results in the material way. So there'll be a little bit of a benefit. There's some benefit because it's in, it's, and it can categorize as devotional service. That means that the devotee has been initiated by a spiritual master. He's working uh, under the guidance of the spiritual master, but he's still not able to execute devotional service as given by the spiritual master. No, well, it's tainted by the, mo the modes. It's like, you know, it was, we were talking about this last night, how Prabhupada was discussing with, uh, with, um, what was his name? Like in 19, the end of the 1960s. Uh, the hero of the hippie generation around that time. What was his name? Mm. He's the Chan Hare Krishna too. I know who you're talking about. I just can't think of the name. Yeah. Um, Prabhupada had a discussion with him. It's actually recorded. A couple discussions. Uh, Allen Ginsberg? That's it. Allen Ginsberg. So Ginsberg was saying, yeah, well, you know, when you smoke marijuana and you chant Hare Krishna, it's even nicer. You get really... A lot of realizations, spiritual realizations. And it's interesting how Prabhupada would respond. He says, by taking you know, these mind-expanding drugs, you can get a religious experience. Prabhupada acknowledged it. But then he rejected the whole idea, saying that it is it is it causes one to become dependent on this material substance and not on Krishna. And then ultimately, if one continues in that way, they won't be able to, you know, make any advancement at all. They won't get any religious experience. So, yeah. Because these mind-expanding drugs open up areas of the mind which we generally don't go into. And sometimes it opens up the area where spiritual realizations come. Mm -hmm. But also sometimes it goes into the areas of the mind where it's, one has a, you know, a very uh, horrible experience also. So it's risky, it's risky. And it's illegal also generally. <laughs> the Prabhupada rejected it 100%, but then he did acknowledge it. Then that could be true, but then again, you become dependent on this substance rather than dependent on Krishna. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the whole uh, era back in the 1960s and 70s where people were taking drugs and having you know spiritual experiences or some something that looks like a mind experience and that led them to spiritual life <laughs> but it's dangerous mm -hmm. 
There was one very elevated Babaji. He was a Vaishnav. And uh, he had one disciple who was actually one of the proponents of uh, mind expanding drugs, who actually became popular amongst the, the youths at that time. So he came to his guru with LSD and he, he gave him, we call it a hit. You know what a hit is, right? A hit is one. He gave him 10 hits of LSD. He gave it to his guru. Guru wanted to try it because he, you know, his, his disciple was like a proponent of that. So he took 10 hits of acid. And after some time he said, am I supposed to feel something from this? <laughs> In other words, he was way beyond that already. <laughs> that was Neem Karoli Baba. Very elevated Vaishnava. And his disciple was Baba Ramdas. Richard Alpert. But the whole thing falls through after some time because it's not it's not an, a real it's not a way to to the spiritual realm. It's it's artificial. It's like, you know, you um, there's a very beautiful place and you're not allowed to go in there because you're not qualified. But somehow you sneak in and then you get caught and you get thrown out again. <laughs> so it's like trying to shortcut the experience. And then when you get, when you get caught, then you're not qualified because spiritual realization is, is a purification of the heart and not simply a, a mind expanding experience. Get the message. Yes, Gumaj. It just, uh, you get more engrossed in the illusion. You think, oh, wow, this is nice or whatever, you know, just even if you're on another realm or something, it's it's totally material. It's, it's illusion. And you can't stay there anyway. That's why when we first started the movement, the first prop I was preaching to people who were using all kinds of drugs. So the, one of the first things he was an article that he wrote and that was later published in one of these hippie newspapers is called Chan Hare Krishna, stay high forever, never come down. Yes, that's true, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, don't come, don't come down. <laughs> uh, I'm going to share from what happened this early morning. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, sorry. Let me uh, please accept my humble obligations. Uh, all of you. Uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, what happened? Uh, I was, uh, same thing, uh, lucky to survive, you know, and uh, same thing was a uh, car accidents. Again, uh, no. yeah, happened this uh, I don't know, it's two, 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 three, uh, this morning. The same thing, uh, the guy was a uh, really DUI, so he hit me from behind, you know, very hard, you know. And somehow, uh, it was in Tilly Park, too, in a nearby house, and the car out, out of control. And uh, same thing, you know, I, I was. Uh, then somehow we got in control and I was, uh, I tried to break, not breaking, it's keep going. And I, you know, the, I think the break or something, I was out of control. And I turned to break, no breaking. Then I would same thing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Somehow we stopped, you know. <clears throat> and just uh, somehow, somehow lucky got to survive again, you know. Just another time, you know. You're okay, 100%. I'm okay. I got hit a little bag, you know, but the 
card is total, uh, the total, you know. So you get told by, uh, yeah, with total of you know. Mm. But then uh, somehow I distribute like a few books, you know, just after, like before that, you know. So I was feeling good, you know, so somehow. <laughs> Montreal always helped, you know. I don't know, it came on Hare Krishna, and somehow just, you know, <laughs> just something. Yeah, after you get hit by you get, you get hit by uh, the guy who was intoxicated. You come out and you sell him a book, right? <laughs> and yeah, only thing I didn't see that he, I was uh, I didn't able to see the car and the guy and him. You know, the police told me that he was like, "Do I?" And uh, because uh, I went to break uh, the car was uh, so I went so far. You know, somehow I was just able to see who was again. <laughs> Maybe but I was uh, earlier. So I, earlier I list few books. You know. Well, there's a way this, you got through on the second level. There's a way to get through on the first level. The second level is when calamities come, you remember Krishna. The first level is don't forget Krishna and there's no calamities. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say, yeah, just somehow I just say all of this is a big protection getting from them. And... Sometimes Krishna allows somebody to smash you just to remember to remind you that you're not chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Krishna doesn't care about your piece of tin called a car. Mm -hmm. He cares about you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, go, yeah. And somehow there is a there was like a one witness because uh, when he drew another from the car too, so he, he didn't hit him and then uh, he stopped and he told me he just uh, cut him up too and then he somehow hit my car, you know, so he was a... Uh, <clears throat> well, we're happy you're still with us. Yes, yeah, somehow, yeah, so still survived, it's almost like third time, you know, this year, I mean, <laughs> like same car got hit like five, six times, like two times was side and there's like two times like... Uh, the same do I people just hitting this car and <laughs> finally got chosen. You know. Well, I can give you a formula. Just don't go, don't go out driving until you finish your 16 rounds. No, yesterday I did. Yeah, I did uh, finish the before. Yeah. So I was uh I stopped by my we, what happened uh yesterday we had like a cousin house. There was like a little New Year party. So I stopped by a little bit you know. So oh, I, I stopped. Yeah. Back yeah, there you go. That was the problem. You went to a New Year's party. That was the problem. No, what happened? To my room, right? <laughs> no, because uh, no, no, no. What yeah, happened? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, uh, Br Brudge of Alasini, she can testify everything I'm saying is true, right, Brudge? <laughs> she knows exactly what happened. <laughs> She's going to be there enough. Well, she knows you better than you know yourself. <laughs> Not as uh, I even like short time because uh, what happened? Uh, I was collecting what do you call it for donation for the ISKCON. So I was meet, trying to meet the, the all the family members and if I were able to talk to them out, you know. Then last more I was feeling kind of shy to ask, you know, that I didn't ask, you know. So then I was I left from there around like 10 30 something. So I was coming back home, you know. Then I took me out. So I don't want to come home, home empty. So I was like uh, Ubering to coming to Tilly Park, you know. So I met some people, I gave them some books and I came almost right there, you know. So I get, so let me finish three more rides and somehow right there, you know, boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You play with, you, you play with death too, too much. So many times Krishna saved you. Yeah. Stop so making I would bring, I somehow bring like a uh, nursing right uh, here. Uh, Nita, Nita, I just listened to this. Stop oh. making Krishna save you all the time. He, he's, you know, he's, that's not his job to just keep saving you every time you get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> He'll save you, but, you know, that's not, we don't want him to, you know, serve us in that way all the time. Anyway, we need you, so stick around. You know, yeah, someone just, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'll get the full story from uh, Brajavi Lassini. She'll tell me everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will send some pictures and some okay. <laughs> send some pictures of Krishna instead. The <laughs> car. <laughs> you know, there's so many smashed cars.
<laughs> okay, so right. yeah. Thank you. Program at the temple tonight is going on. It's been going on since the last two hours, and it's going on for two more hours. So I have to get there. So we'll see you all soon again and uh, try to uh, think in terms of where you can most effectively put your energy and to make a promise, a vow to become more and more attached to Krishna, <laughs> more and more in love with Krishna. That's the goal. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for today's session. Thank you so much for your time and association. Maharaj, please bless all of us so that we can keep up with our resolution for this year. Please bless us. Thank you. I will come to you for blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you blessings, but I can pray that everything you, that the devotees make nice progress and feel experience and experience the happiness of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One last uh, one last philosophical or very important statement, it says, whatever you do on this day will be the foundation for the rest of the year. So use this day in a very spiritual way. And that will be, that will carry you through the rest of the year. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna